How's it going guys? Today we're going to do a galaxy style paint job. So the car that I'm starting with today is a Hot Wheels 64 Continental. And I thought this would be a good candidate because of how low it rides. I think it'll look pretty cool with this galaxy paint job on it. And I did this Ferrari previously. This was actually for the JDC Free the Ferraris build. So we're going to try to do the same kind of paint job on this Continental. We've got two posts here. Let's break it open. All right, we're in. Let's see what we got in here. All right, we got some glass, the body, seats, and the base with wheels. This thing is so low to the ground. I'm not going to need to lower it at all. Let's pop off these wheels. These are actually pretty cool. I'm gonna save these for another car. And we have a chrome base today, so let's get to de-chroming. And welcome to my kitchen counter. So I like to use this bleach, just straight kitchen bleach for de-chroming. It works really well and to show you how well, I will let this footage run in real time. Just gotta make sure that the chrome is all in contact with the bleach and you'll see how quickly that chrome finish will start to come off and it'll all go to black plastic. I've noticed that sometimes with the Hot Wheels, the under the chrome, they either have black or white. I haven't really seen any other colors so far. That'll give us a nice surface that we can paint on top of. So I will get this rinsed off and I'll meet you back at the bench. So here we are, most of that came off. There's a little bit left on there, but that's not gonna be an issue. Uh, we could scrape that off if we wanted to, but I'm not gonna worry about it. That'll be good enough for us. As you can see, the detailed area is all free of the chrome. So we should be good. Next is on to this body. So I'm gonna try to use some acetone to see if that paint will start to come off. And it didn't. So we're gonna to have to go to the stripper. I'll see you in the shed. And welcome to the shed. So we're gonna get this car stripped of its paint. And this is the product that I use. Holtz paint remover. It works really well. And I use this really mangled kid's brush to dab it on there. And again, I'll show you this in real time. It works really well. Probably not the cleanest chemical, but uh, it's not as smelly as some other things I've used for paint remover. Just look at that. It bubbles right up. This is not sped up at all. Look at that, the paint's just bubbling right up. Just in a matter of seconds. And you can take the brush and wipe it right off and I'll get this rinsed and I'll see you back at the bench. And here we are. Paint came off really well. There's a little bit left here on the inside, but I'm not too worried about that. You could polish this up if you wanted to. I'm not gonna bother. Uh, we're gonna end the base coating with silver, but we need something else. Ah, right, wheels. So for this build, I have this uh, Ford Econoline pickup, 
and I really like these wheels. And that's what we're going to use today. And you can see the, the width of these wheels and the size matches perfectly with the stock wheels. So it'll just be a one for one swap. So we also have this glass and it's a bit scuffed, but I don't actually have any tools or materials to help with that. So we'll keep it as is. Seats as well, nice and black already. I'm gonna leave them as they are. All right, let's get this clipped up for priming. And oh no, there's nowhere to clip this base. That's when you get some of this sticky poster tack. Stick it right there on the inside where it's never gonna be seen. Now we have a good strong connection for priming. And voila, we are primed. So let's talk about the paint. I use this Mr. Hobby aqueous color and we're gonna use the gloss silver and this Mr. Retarder Kind of a funny name there, uh, is good for making it extra glossy and helping us out with some brush strokes. I do not own an airbrush, so this helps out a whole lot. And you'll see how smooth you can get even with a brush. I like to use old pet bottle caps for paint. Get a nice soft brush. get some paint on the base there. I think I'm going to end up painting this a different color on the bottom, but we do need to do all the chrome trim in this gloss silver metallic. So I'll go ahead and get everything silvered up. And there we are, a little front detail shining through well. Now here's where that Mr. Retarder is going to help out a lot. Get some on the brush there, get some paint. And I'm not being shy about how much paint to put on this car. The good thing about that, uh, the liquid that helps the paint to dry slowly, is you can just keep moving the paint around as much as you want to get it as smooth as you want. And it will not dry or stick on you. Works really, really well. I might be messing around with this paint a bit too much, but you'll see how smooth it can get. And you can see I'm dipping my brush in the retarder liquid. And there we go. You can see there's a little bit of brush strokes showing. I'm not too worried, this is just an undercoat. And we'll let that dry. All right, now, for this purple, last time I painted it, I mixed up a little custom bottle here. And this is actually four different paints mixed together. So inside of this bottle is gloss purple, metallic blue green, clear red and that gloss metallic silver and these are all the same brand so let's see if we're dry and it's still not dry see that's that's kind of the trouble with that mr retarder So while we're waiting for that, let's take a look here. We have this paint called Burnt Iron, and I really love this paint. I have about three pots of it. Picked them up just to have on hand. The cool thing about this paint is it's a metallic paint, but it's matte. Normally used for exhaust on models, but we're gonna use it to paint this chassis. And I'm not going to go for the retarder this time. I'm just going to put it on straight and it'll dry extremely quickly. And maybe a little bit too quickly. It's starting to stick on my brush already. So what I need to do now is use some thinner 
and I'll dip my brush in the thinner and in some paint. And this actually has kind of the same effect as the Mr. Retarder. Um, if you use it in small quantities, you can push it around a bit, but it will still dry really quickly. Once that thinner evaporates, the paint will dry as quickly as normal. Whereas the Mr. Retarder does something to the paint to make it dry really slowly. Okay, now this silver is finally dry. They came out pretty well. It's a nice even coat, especially for a brush. Now, the strategy for the purple is going to be to use thinner. And I'm going to go for some clean thinner and another cap. So what we're going to try to do is thin down the paint to give it that wavy variation that you see in the nebula or galaxy wraps and paint jobs. We want to show that silver base through the purple, but we don't want to use too much thinner because it's also the thinner for the silver paint and it will start to come off and you'll be left with the primer coat visible, which is what we do not want to do. So I'll just start putting this on really lightly, moving it around. Remember, you don't want to push the thinner around too much on the silver, or you will remove it. Just want to get some color on there and move it around. Keeping some nice variation throughout the purple. And we're going to end up doing a second coat with the purple. You can kind of dab it on there. This is the first coat. That's where we're at at the moment. Nice and shiny. So for the second coat, you'll notice that my thinner is a lot more purple. I added some of the purple paint, uh, straight purple, into the thinner to give it a bit more purple color. You can see we'll darken it up just a little bit. Now for this second coat, I'm really focusing on getting it looking smooth, but keeping the variation. Something else I like about using the thinner like this is it, it kind of pulls away from the edges of the panels and accentuates those lines. All right, next step is going to be messy. So we're going to put down a paper towel here and we're going to use matte white and copper to make our stars. Now I have another one of those really cheap kids brushes that's super stiff and we're going to use a toothpick to flick the paint onto the car. So starting with the white, flicking tiny, tiny little specks. You gotta remember these cars are around 1 64th scale, so we really don't want huge globs on here. It's a really subtle effect. And I am gonna do this a bit messier. I prefer to use a toothbrush with my thumb, just more natural for me. And here we are with our stars. I think it came out really well. Just checking I have a good even distribution on the sides and the top. And uh, as you'll see, we have a few big blotches here and there. There's one on the hood. And uh, we'll correct those in the next step. I like to use these nail art brushes. I get them from the dollar store. They're like 10 in a pack for a dollar. So I can just, you know, not worry about tossing them out after one car. And we'll get some of that paint and just give it a nice little light coat over those blotches. Next we're going to use some clear red to do the tail lights. And I just realized I have no idea what the tail lights look like. All right, I found out that I need to paint just the top portion. So that's what we'll do. Those taillights are looking good. 
Now it's time to do something with the front. And we did some white on the headlights and a black wash on the grill to bring out that detail. All right, wheels are on. They fit really well. This thing rides perfectly low. Slap the body on there and see how it looks. That is a nice fit and it still rolls perfectly. Good. Okay, now this is what we started with. The Hot Wheels 64 Continental. And we put our Galaxy Nebula paint job on there. I'm really pleased with how this came out. It's a little bit lighter than the Ferrari I painted, but I think it really pops with those red wall tires. Here's some nicer shots of it. I want to thank you for watching the video, for liking the video, commenting, thank you for subscribing, and I'll see you on the next build.